Alrighty, welcome back. We're gonna go at it again. We got some stuff, or got some stuff done last night. Um, got the trailing arms put in. Uh, did not have a heim joint for this side on the top, on the bottom. So we're gonna have to order one, and that's what it takes about getting parts. Uh, I've got a heim joint on the top, but I have not got a heim joint on the bottom. I just put the bolt in there and left it there. I've got that one hooked up on that side. Did not tighten anything up on the back yet. Uh, hopefully on this video you'll get to see it via roller for the very first time and the reason being is I've, I've always had a piece of square stock running from this part of the chassis well to this part of the chassis and then the rear end was tacked to it so it's never been rolling on its own on its own suspension on the back um, that's where I'm at so I've got one shock in I've got the uh, pan hard bar in so we're not down where we're supposed to be yet. We're still sitting on jack stands. But I also want to go back up to the front. Let's go back up to the front. Uh, I think I said a while back before, uh, when you're restoring cars, sometimes you, you, take it, you, you take it apart, you fix it, then you put it back together. Then you might do it three or four more times. Well, I got to take the shocks back off. I was going a little quick and I did not put my steel bushings in my shocks. So I got to take them off. And I noticed that when I took the back, put the, went to put the back shocks on, I had my steel bushings. So I'm going to take the front shocks back off, put the steel bushings in, and then put the shocks back on. Also, as I get going along here, as I get going, got, the, got it down on the four wheels, or got the wheels on it and got it down, come up to the front here, baby. You can see this is how tight this is how tight the front of this car is with the new ball joints and then all the new bushings and everything. Um, there's no air in the bags and just with the tight uh, top, top ball joint, bottom ball joint, having the shock on it, that car, this, is, this frame is not falling to the ground. Awesome. There's no air in the bags whatsoever. Uh, but I still have to take the shocks off to put them steel bushings in. Now I get to see about my flex lines. Another thing too, on the brakes, I guess there's you know some confusion on the brakes. Uh, there's no confusion to me, but I'll go over it. What the hey, on the caliper. When when I when I started this car, um, when I started making this chassis, um, and I had the I had the body done before I had the chassis. But when I had that body done, I put I got it on top of this chassis. I did not want the steering on the front. I did not want to see all the steering or any steering on the front of the car. And to make it look the way I want it to look, I could not have it up there. It just didn't work. It did not work for me anyways. So what I did is I took the spindles. I'm thinking that I, I must have changed the spindle for the spindle that went on this side with over this side. If I changed it, then the steering arm would be in the front. So when I changed and had the steering arm in the back, so now my rack and pinion's in the back, and I've used a rack off a of Jaguar that originally is off the back. If you take a rack that is on the back of your, of your steering and you put it on the front, then your car will steer backwards. How do I know this? Because I've done it before. But as I've take, taken the, the steering arm and have it on the back and have the rack on the back, when I went to apply the brakes with the kit that I had, the, the bracket that bolted on the caliper um, was on the opposite side of the steering arm. When I tried to put it on the back side, it did not work because of the steering arm. So basically what's happening is when I modified something or changed something, it just went toot, 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 and it keeps going down the line. And it also went to the brake calipers. Also, uh, there are cars that have the brake calipers in the front. Yes, there is. You have to think about it. Whether I squeeze the rotor from here, whether I squeeze the rotor from there, what is the difference? <laughs> You know, what is the difference if I squeeze it here or squeeze it there? So as I've changed it and put it on the front, um, basically the main thing that needs to happen is, is that bleeder screw has to be on the top for bleeding purposes. Air goes to the top and they want that bleeder screw on the top. And uh, with the bleeder screw over here on the top, we should be fine. It does not matter, you know, you know I, I'm thinking that you wouldn't want it on the bottom because your bleeder screw would be on the bottom, it would be hard to bleed. Um, but basically that's about it. I've changed it on the front because it would not mount on the back because of the steering arm. And the steering arm was changed because I modified it to fit the car. Everything on this chassis is modified to fit that car. I did what I had to do to make it work. And that's what I'm gonna do right to the very end. Uh, 
where I have this flex line. Uh, the flex line, I can see now that I've got the airbag in there and I've got it down on the ground, I've got the wheels on it, now I've been playing with it a little bit. If you come over here on the back side, sweetheart, my flex line will go in my caliper. Oh, I already see I've got a crush, crush washer in there. Okay, my flex line will go in there. And now, as I see, and now what I can see is I can make a bracket and put it on the side of that hat. And that'll work just fine. And I'm going to show you why I'm going to say it's going to work just fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the wheel to where I think, you know, you know, that's, I think that radius right there would be a strong enough cut that um, it would not go any, cut any sharper than that. Got that flex line in there. You can see if I put it there, it's not going to hit the airbag. Not going to hit it at all. So if I take it and go the other way, we'll go all the arm all the way in. And I take my flex line, do it again. All I'm doing is holding it to the caliper and run it where I see it, see it fits. I think it's actually, um, it's quite nice. It's gonna fit just fantastic. So what I have to do, like I said, sometimes you tear a car back, car back and forth three, four, five, six times. I did not have this figured out before I painted the chassis because I never had the brakes on before. This is the very first time I had the brakes on. Now that I've got that on there, that shock has to come off. It has to come back off so I can drill some holes in there and put a bracket on there and uh, make it work. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just grab a marker. Grab a marker. So I've got this flex line. I've got this clip here. It goes in there. So basically, I'm going to make a bracket, just a bracket like this. Uh, so the hole will be here. This will accept this piece, put a hole in that. I'll put a bolt in this to bolt it in here, bolt inside of that. And then I'll bring out here and I'll put a little tiny tit on it and put a hole on the back side. So I'll, I'll drill a hole and bolt the bracket on. And then I'll have a little tit here. That, that little tit there will go in another hole. So there'll be actually two holes. One to bolt the bracket on. One to, to a, apply a tit that goes inside. A tit or... Tit sounds good. A nipple. We won't go that far. We'll put a, just like a little nipple that goes in there. So, so it can't turn or take off anywhere. So it's got two, two places more or less. It's got one place to mount and one place that keeps it steady. And that's basically what I need. So I need a tit bolt and then a hole to put the flex line in basically that's what's going on and then that will not move on that hat so it's bolted to the chassis then I see that we can run our brake lines across there wherever just as long as that flex line is put on but I have to make that bracket got the airbags for the back got the intake for the airline never had them on there before I stole them from the front because I did not have them because when I dropped the front down, it didn't go anywhere. So I don't need it really right now to, to get it to roll. And um, Jolene was saying on the, there was a comment, it's a Schrader valve that I need to put the air in. It's kind of a hard thing to remember. But anyways, let's finish the back. I got a shock to put on. I got the two airbags to put on. I've got an airline teed up so I can air the bags up in the back. Never ever done that before. I'm kind of never done that yet. Uh, you can go through all the videos. We've never done that yet. We've placed them on there, but we've never done it. So, also, uh, we had someone saying the brakes are too big. You can never have too big of brakes for something. Um, this is going to have two, probably 270 horse, probably whatever. It's going to 270, 260, 280, whatever it's going to have. It's going to haul that car down the road quite quick. And it's nice to have brakes that will stop you as fast as you can accelerate. That, that what, that's what makes a supercar, I, I think, uh, basically. So let's go to the back. I've got a shock here. I was out here last night playing with this, and uh, this is what I had to do. I've got, I put the, the steel bung inside. I'll show you how I done that. I just, put, I just put in the vise, stuck it in one end, stuck it in there a little bit, put in the vise, squeezed it in, that was it. On the top, I had a hard time doing this. Took me some time. On the top, we got paint, primer, all kinds of it. I had to take all the holes, take a file, and file all the holes out. My file's here somewhere. Had to file all the holes out on everything, 
On this one here had to follow it all out. On that one had to follow it out. All on this one had to follow Everything had to be followed. On the bottom all had to be followed out. And then, then I had to go for it. But right now I've got this shock. It's not fitting in there that well. And uh, what I've been doing is I've been taking the grinder and just buffing down the side. And that's what I'm going to do right at the present very moment in front of your very eyes. And I'm going to buff down the side of it just so I can get it to fit in there. And uh, not beating the bracket over. I tried that. I got that one bent up a little, bent a little bit, but not willing to do that anymore. Not worried about hitting that on the side of that rubber because you're not going to see the side of the rubber when it's in between that bracket. I just want it to fit. Jolene wasn't here last night when I was playing around. I kicked your rear end a couple times, but I didn't hurt it. There, that's what I'm talking about. Perfect. Perfect. All right, I'm just going to leave that there. I hope that don't drop. No, I'm going to. That's not going nowhere. I'm going to grab a bolt, a washer. I'm shy of washer, and I'm going to steal a washer from the front when I take off the shocks on the front when I put in the steel bung. When you're putting this stuff together, it's not easy, or it's not hard to uh, put something together wrong and then go back and forth and do it again. And uh, I prove that to myself all the time. Even when I'm building it, I'm taking it back apart and doing it again. I kind of messed with this one quite heavy. Uh, I got it sprung out there a little bit because I didn't take it down, but I'll bring it back together. Now, can't see that well. Just want to bring it in a little further. That could be just as easy as having yeah, I don't want to hit that. It could be just as easy as that thing not. There we go. Just had to hold my tongue right. Just had to hold my tongue right. You can still see. That one's a lot better than that one. On the bottom it fit, or it seemed to. You can see that's not going to fit yet. It's uh, The frame chassis has got to come down a little bit. So I'm going to get a jack, the jack and let it down a little bit. I'm not down far enough. My, my shock's all the way out. And get the jack. And then we'll be off to putting the airbags in for the very first time. You heard me, for the very first time, the airbags have been in, but they've never been working. So, so this is where I'm going to be able to uh, adjust. This is where, where I'm going to be able to adjust my trailing arms on the bottom for the for the angle of the dry shaft or the rear end when it goes up and down. I'll be able to adjust it with that one there. I haven't got one on this side yet. I kind of destroyed it. <laughs> I don't destroyed it, but I want a rag. Just throw it on the back of that. We've got the sitting on the two front wheels. I only had one jack stand on it before in the front. And then we'll take these ones out of the back for a second. We'll let it down a little bit. I haven't got that wheel. 
even screwed on yet. Kind of slacking on a little bit of the stuff here, but it's all right. That's what I'm telling myself. Just gotta let this down a little bit. I think I'll tighten that wheel up on that side. On both sides, actually, just tighten them up a little bit. Wheels are all gonna be coming back off, so I wasn't interested in, in uh, tightening them up and taking the paint off. back of that shock. I need a washer from the front. I'm short one washer. I don't know if I'm short, it just I didn't. Wash it this side. And the Loctite that I'm using uh, is not, it's not the grade that you have to use a torch or heat anything up to get it off. You can get that stuff in all different grades. I haven't got that grade here. And I probably don't want that grade of Loctite that you can't get it off without heat. It would kind of ruin everything, ruin your paint, all that sort of stuff. Do not have it. Just looking at this thing here for a second. I'm going to tighten this up, I'm going to tighten that up, and uh, just go through and tighten a few things up. I'm not going to tighten the trailing arms up this second, and the reason being is I've got to take them back off for adjustment, and I need to put a, a heim joint on this one, so I'll have to take them back off. So I just really want to make sure I'm tightening things. That The only things I'm tightening is the things I, I want to stay on. Uh, this is just hand tight. That's fine. Let's get a ratchet. I'm going to turn the air on. Just put a little air to that. Tighten them up. Bah, bah, bah. Things are going really good. Uh, I don't like the idea I have to take the shocks off again, but I have to make that bracket and I have to put them bungs in. So it's kind of a, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. You know what I mean? It's one thing to take the shock off and just put the steel bung in, but it's another thing when I can take the shock off, put the bung in, and make the bracket for the, for the flex line, have the flex line work. This car is going to be very low to the ground. We're pretty well at ride height right here, I would say. Pretty well at ride height. Let's tighten this. Nope, that's not three quarter. Size is that. This is hey, five sixteenths. Five sixteenths. Joey, if I kick your frame today, I don't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to. Joey looks amazing this morning. She did her hair up, it's all straight. Amazing, beautiful. I'm a lucky man. 
And I really feel that way. I'm a lucky man. I'm a lucky man. If I didn't tell you already, I'm a lucky man. Come on now. Yeah, baby. Checking it over here. One washer net, one washer net. And I got a washer there. So basically, I don't think it. That's fine. That's fine. Let's do it. Let's tighten the shocks up. That's fine. Let's do it. I got a three quarter here, three quarter inch wrench. Looking and seeing if everything's the same. That's all I'm looking. Boom, she's on. Not going anywhere. Not going anywhere. Got her steel bung inside. That's a good thing. Missed that on the front. Have to fix it. Going to take a washer out on the front too. Good. Beautiful. Shocks are tight. Pitman or other sides. Okay. Do the air. Pull that out. Now we're onto the sh onto the airbags itself. Now the air is coming through the bottom, so I'm going to be able to shove the air line just up and through. It just shoves in, and when you want to take it off, you just push that down and it pulls out say just that's what it does and I'm gonna have to air it to keep it up because the back will drop obviously there's no, no there's no uh, what can I say there's no friction to stop it up front I think it's all the friction of the ball joints the top ball joint bottom ball joint the air or the shock holding that front end up and it's it's cool now I'm gonna get a knee pad Never had the back aired up before. I'm happy about the flex line in the front. Very happy about that. Ah. Well, I guess that wouldn't be no different, would it? is to getting the paint off around that would be no different. Paint off that there. Every hole has got primer and paint. It's called build up. So I'm gonna take it off. Didn't have earplugs big enough for this hole. Give me baby. <laughs> Didn't have earplugs big enough for this hole. Uh, 
going to take off today and go get our transmission. We've bought a transmission for the engine that we've got for Elvis. Dane got it for us on a good price. I'm figuring if it works out, if it works out, it'll be a good price. And if it doesn't, eh, we're off to the drawing board again. Every time you change something on a car, it just keeps going on down the line. It's not like you change it and that's it. Nope, it goes right down through the line. Just like the engine on Elvis, we changed the engine. Now you gotta change the, this fuel sending unit. You gotta change the, <laughs> you gotta have a fuel regulator, uh, fuel pressure, all that sort of stuff. Gotta change changes all down the line. Does so. When I change the steering in the front, that changed the position of the calipers. It's called customizing. how much it builds up, eh? have a washer on that. I don't have, have any big washers to put on that. I want a gold washer is what I want. just don't know if I got it. Not going to see it and I don't think it matters. I got smaller nuts to put in there. I do so. Just put them in. It's not going to affect anything right now, I don't think. Is that perfect. Hmm. It's got a little bit of movement there, actually. Just going to finger tight everything on the airbags for now. Because I don't know what's going on yet. Because I don't know done this airbag in the back yet. You're going to get to see it for the very first time. These airbags, I, got, I think I paid, I think I paid $35 a piece in tax. I think I paid $35 for them and they're for the back of a tractor trailer. When you have your, your tractor trailer, your cabin sits on airbags. And these are the airbags that the cabin of the tractor trailer sits on. So I'm thinking they would hold more weight um, on, the, on a tractor trailer than they would on this car. So that's basically what I went for. They were re reasonable. And basically all I, want the, all I want the air ride for is, if Jolene wants to show it someday, it's able to go down on the ground. We're not, we're not going somewhere, uh, dropping it on the ground and pumping it back up. We're not doing that. It's for show only and ride and the price was right and the weight the weight of these things are not much but as i have it here this this is what i've used and also i don't even know i don't know 
like when the car sits down on these airbags, I don't know. Um, if when it sits down on these airbags, is the, is the bag going to blow up like a balloon and, and we're going to lose a bunch of ride height? Don't know that yet. Do you know that, sweetheart? I told you that before, I have not. Yeah. But there's also, you can get a taller bag, so it wouldn't be nothing that we couldn't replace with a taller bag. Um, it's just, I bought these and uh, that's where we're at. I've mocked it up for these. That's where it's at. And they're back for the back of a tractor trailer that hold the cab. Me and Jolene Una are going to acquire. This is, this is the scary part. It's getting that nut on there so it's right. Come on, I'm going to. I've not got a jack stand underneath that. I really don't want to let my head underneath there. Hard to get at. All right, don't have to worry about that right now. Just get the nut on. To make this thing the roller, all I have to do is put the airbag in. It's not going nowhere. I can get underneath of it at any time. It's a bugger, that thing. Just so easy to get it cross-threaded. That's why I'm getting it cross-threaded. Still getting it cross threaded. Nope. Making me work for it. Tired of that pretty quick. So, nope. Here it is. So easy to get it cross threaded.
live action here at Hilt's Auto Co. Sparkles is getting her car put together. <laughs> and she does sparkle, boy. She does sparkle. Believe me, she sparkles. I'd love to see that go on. Just tickety boo, I would. Oh, got it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got it. Can you see it? Yeah. That makes me happy. That makes me happy. Alrighty. Just got that fingered up there. Now we got airlines we're gonna shove in there. The airlines are pretty basic. Just shove them in. Now. Air pressure's building up air for me. I gotta get down here. I don't want to get right underneath it. I got no. It's up in there. going to be the first first time that the bags have been aired up underneath this chassis here in a very short second uh, the only thing holding the, the rear end holding the pitch where it is right now is the one heim joint down here haven't got one on the other side so if this one's doing the job I'll just take that one off when it comes time put the heim joint in it and then if I have to replace that one I will all right Keep your fingers crossed, baby. And your toes. I never pumped these bags up before, have no idea. So, keep fingers crossed. Schrader valve. Did it. Huh. Like you said, huh. Kind of swelled out, did they not? Yep. Is that a good thing? Um, well, it's not close to the. Oh, it's a good thing or not? It looked like it pulled. Let's let it down. It's on its own. Uh, I might. Take that off. See what we got going on there. So, this is this is what I I sort of don't like. Come here, come on this side. This is what I don't like. I think that you might have to. We might have to get a taller bag. I'm not sure. It all depends. This is what I don't like. Right here. See that? See how close that is? Okay. I, I probably will round that off. But the bag did not sort of get taller. It sort of got shorter, did it not? Mm. Did it seem like it got shorter? I can take a measurement and find out, but I can't see it getting shorter. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, that works. We're oh, yeah. oh, yeah, I'm not pushing that down. Um, one thing I'm, I'm saying, that's awful close there. It's awful close. Wouldn't want that to scrape that bag going up and down. You know what would happen. Don't you? Mm -hmm. Not sure what kind of pressure them things take either. We can get a little longer bag because I've had a set. The exact same bag, just a little longer. I've had a set. 
Um, but I'm thinking that that is perfect. The perfect. Well, who knows? Can't tell you. Is that but full ride height? Like, is that the highest? That's the that's the highest is going to be. It's either going to go that or lower. And I can't see it going much lower, to be honest with you, because of. I just can't see it going lower. It might squish out a little bit, but I can't see it. That's cool. Can, That's cool. And also, what's that? Can that pan hard bar be bolted on the other side? Like, wouldn't that give me I got that on wrong. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> My Jolene just come up with it. Now. For me to get that out, I gotta take that bag back out. Uh. That's exactly it. You're right, Jolene. I should have known that actually when it was on such an angle like that. Mm -hmm. So there you go. There's another boo boo that I just made. Uh, I'm gonna put this back in. I'm gonna take that back off. Good call, Jolene. Jolene picked up on it. Thanks, baby. We'll let the air to that. Take the bag back off. And then we're going to take the hind joint and put it on the other side. It did actually go closer. You can see the bag going down, getting longer now, can you not? Yeah. So, also, instead of getting a new bag, we can just put a shim underneath here, right? We don't need a new bag. Mm -hmm. We just need to put a, a shim in there. Right. That's okay. We can put it, we can shim it up however, however, however much we want. Oh, here comes some family. Stay, Fina! Stay! So I'm going to take this, move it out of the way here, just put it like that. <laughs> just one second here, I've got to take it. <laughs> looks good, eh? I need the wrench. Well, you heard it right from the horse's mouth. <laughs> wowzy, wowzy, wowzy. I'll try to keep the other one. Fire truck, wow. Right from the horse's mouth. Where's the 516 at? Where did I put that at? Right there. Put this in reverse. Pull that off. You'd like the, you'd like the system, the airbag system in the back, Tim. It's, it's per, trucker style. It is trucker style. So this is Jolene's suggestion. Jolene's suggestion. If you're not able to take suggestions, you're, you're missing out on life because a lot of people have a lot of good ideas. You just have to be able to accept them. And uh, we're going to put this on this side. Good call, Jolene. Probably head on that side to start with in the beginning. but Awesome. Um, I don't know if I even need a washer on that. I'm going to throw one on it just for the shits and giggles. Look how far away we're now. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. You are. Good call, Jolene. Good call. I'm going to take one suggestion. Just get a new airline. <laughs> we get down to... Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Bolt this back up. And we can make the ride height with a shim. Yes, we can. Make a ride height with a shim. Love it. 
How you doing if it's fine this morning, Tim? Uh, How you doing this morning? Great. Awesome. Awesome. These are the airbags on the back of your tractor trailer that hold the cab up. In those small little bags. Yeah. And uh, it's Jolene's suspension in a Bugatti. <coughs> Saving on weight and money. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. But that, that already went up. That's fine. Awesome. 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 Got a distance there now? Oh, yeah. Good. Man, you're not all just good looks, are you? <laughs> huh? No. She's talented, too, boys. Believe me, I know. She's talented. Awesome. There you go. We got a roller. Rolling, rolling, rolling. First time ever rolling. First time. Uh, basically, watch your steps through here. Uh, the only thing I want to try to do now is I want to let the air out of the bags and see where, see what happens, see what happens. And basically, what I want to see what happens. I want to see what happens to the pitch of this because we know that it's going to come. It should, it should, the pitch should go down a little bit further. But you're not going to be driving it. It's going to be for show. All right, let's just go slow. Go slow, baby. Looks good. Why is it going? Is it go up and then go down, or? I don't want to go down too fast. <laughs> In good. Is it not? Sure is. Just gonna keep going. Picture the pitch of the rear ends. See, you can, you can see it tucking down a little bit more, but you're not gonna be driving it that way. There, you're just setting it down. So, we don't want the drive shaft going up and hitting anything. We want it to go down. I would say. Just gonna take a little more air out of it. Nothing's hitting. Shocks are going to bottom out here in a bit. Nothing's hitting. You can see that turning down a little bit. That's fine. Cool. Remember, we have a, a, a uh, we can't set the chassis, lay the chassis right on the ground for the simple reason is the engine would hit. It has a the transmission pan is over there below. So right now, uh, the transmission mount here, the transmission would be on the ground right at the present moment. So it's, it's and, and your car is lower than that. So, wow, <laughs> looks awesome. Happy, happy, happy. That looks good. And the pitch has not changed a whole bunch that it's, it's gonna affect anything. Love it. Man, I'm, in, I'm, I'm feeling good. <laughs> back in place <laughs> awesome so now Jolene has a, a rolling chassis I have to make the brackets for the flex lines and what I mean by rolling chassis I'm gonna show you <laughs> love it awesome absolutely awesome 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 and if we need more ride height we can put a shim underneath the bag or whatever we want. That's awesome, baby. There you go. Rolling chassis. Wow. I'm happy that I changed the shock brackets this way instead of turning the other way because when the rear end comes up, these can pivot. So this can pivot down there and that can pivot this way to allow it to go that way. That's good. I'm liking how the, the, the trailing arms are working. And I like it when people tell me it don't, it can't work. <laughs> yes, it can. I was saying this morning to Jolene that, um, you know, we were talking about the, the tractor that we're going to acquire, the tractor trailer we're going to acquire, and uh, just talking about a few things. And, and it's kind of, what if we can't do this? And what if we can't do that? 
My brain does not even go there when I'm doing something. My brain goes to the fun part. Can't wait, can't wait to drive it, can't wait to do what we want to do. It does not go to anything else other than that. And I'm very happy with what's going on. Uh, the, the, tr the trailing arm, the, the heim joint down here will adjust that if I'm at an adjustment there at all. Yeah, ecstatic, awesome. Uh, the bags I think will hold no problem whatsoever. I can push it. <laughs> That's quite sturdy, that is. I'm quite happy about that. We've got lots of room in there now that Jolene's figured it out for me. I think I had it there once before, but just kind of wasn't, my brain wasn't there. I'm kind of playing with it. Shocks are not hitting. Shocks are bottoming out when, when the, the airbags are all the way down. Did you notice that? Mm -hmm. Shocks are bottoming out when, when it's all the way down. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. Do you want to give away a hat or a shirt? Yep. We're going to give away a hat or a shirt. I've got to tear this thing back apart. I'm very happy right at the present second. Very happy. Got to tear this thing apart. Put the steel bungs back in it. Got to make a bracket for the side of the hat here to hold the flex line because that's going to work now. So I have to get new flex lines. And powder coating is not for show cars. <laughs> powder coating is for durability and, uh, and trying to take some work away from yourself. That's what powder coating is all about. Powder coat goes on bare metal, and uh, it's not for show cars. Ask a lowrider if they got powder coating on their cars. <laughs> That's awesome, sweetheart. Awesome. Awesome. Love it. So now we'll, we'll get this thing. We can push this in. We can detail the engine, uh, do that sort of stuff. We can need a Heim joint, so we're going to have to send for that. We do not have it. We're going to have to get it. Because our heim joint is a left-hand thread, hard thing to get here in Canada. Uh, so we'll have to send for one of those. The air ride works in the back. Very happy. I knew, like, yeah, awesome. How many comments? 633 comments. Thank you very much, everybody. We appreciate it. We really do. Um, I'm very happy right at the present moment because the air ride in the back works just like I thought it would. And uh, I'm not happy that I have to take the front shocks back off. No, I'm not. But I'm going to do it because I need to do it to get the flex line mount made. Micah Wallaroos. Yeah, thanks. I'm not going to say it one more time. Mike, <laughs> Micah Wallaroos, you want a hat or shirt of your choice. Put a banjo fittings on the front brake lines. Um, I very well could. And a banjo fitting is the little round ones that you bolt on. They can move up and down, that sort of stuff. Do not need them now. Micah, thank you for the, for the comment, though, because I was just saying to Jolene this morning, um, even though uh, there's a lot of things being said and a lot of things that we do are right or wrong, I'm learning along with everybody else because there's some comments that come in there that I learn about. I did not know there was Loctite um, that worked good enough that you had to get a torch to take it off. did not know that. Um, I come right up here and I took a nut off. <laughs> I took a nut off. I took the nut off the shock. I said, wow, I did, I did not know that. Uh, the Loctite that I use does not need a torch. Um, I have a different grade of Loctite and uh, did not know that. So I come right up, <laughs> I come right up and checked it. Um, yeah, flex lines are going to work. I just have to make the bracket to make them work. I knew I had to make a bracket anyways. And I know I have to take the shocks off because of, I have to put my steel bungs in. I got a little, a little bit of in a rush. Didn't put my steel bungs in my shocks, which I'm going to. I just put them in the shock, put them in the vise, and, and put them in. But, Micah, you want a hat or shirt of your choice, and I'm a happy camper. I'm going to push the chassis in. We'll clean up a little bit. Maybe later on today we'll get this 40 Ford in. We'll do a little chop, get rejuvenated, and then get right back on it. Have a good one, everybody.